Is Warner Bros. new 4K UHD release of Edge of Tomorrow worth adding to your collection? Find out in my next 4K review. Edge of Tomorrow is a 2014 science fiction action film directed by Doug Liman starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt as a soldier fighting aliens gets to relive the same day over and over again after the day restarts every time he dies. Warner Brothers presents this film for the first time on 4K UHD with HDR10. What is up everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. And today guys, we're going to talk about this 4K of Edge of Tomorrow. We're going to talk about the movie itself, the 4K transfer special features packaging all that good stuff but man i watched this last night i watched it back in probably 2014 2015 for the first time i didn't get a chance to see it in theaters i wish that i would have but i think that was around the time uh, my daughter was born actually it was the same year this came out 2014 and i just wasn't going out and seeing a lot of movies back then so i didn't get a chance to see this one but i bought the blu-ray of this i think back in 2015 2016 somewhere around there and I watched this and I was just so floored by it. Like I was, I was not expecting this movie. I remember when it came out, it got to advertisement and all that stuff. And I remember just thinking, oh, this is, you know, another generic sci sci science fiction Tom Cruise movie. Um, so I didn't, I didn't check it out. I, I don't even feel like I heard anything that good about it. But when I watched it, I was like, damn, did this movie deliver far beyond uh, what I thought that it could. And I had not seen it since the first time that I watched this um, on Blu-ray and it's just so good. It's just, I love Tom Cruise in this movie. Not only is this probably one of the more underrated, under talked about films. I feel like people are coming around to it now, but, uh, it's just one of the most underrated science fiction films of the 2010 science fiction action films of all time. Like this movie to me, to me is up there. Like with an aliens, like with a Terminator, like I feel like a Robocop, I feel like it's that good. I don't feel like it's reached that iconic classic status yet, but I feel like it is, it's up there. Like it's that good to me. I love this movie so much. So it's, it's an underrated science fiction action film. It is a underrated Tom Cruise movie. Like he gets all the credit in the world for the Mission Impossible movies, Top Gun, which just released, which is doing so well. I'm so happy for Tom Cruise and, and everybody involved in that film, but he does not get the credit for it, that he deserves for this movie. Like this is a real, this deserves like a whole like five, six film franchise on its own. I heard it was getting a sequel at some point, but they shelved it, I think. And it's been like three or four years since I heard about that. But uh, this was released in theaters under the uh, Edge of Tomorrow title, but all the promotional material when this came out, if you guys remember, uh, said live, die, repeat. Like that's front and center on the poster so much so that they put it on the Blu-ray like it's live, die, repeat. And then right there at the bottom in the corner is Edge of Tomorrow. So I do think that's kind of interesting. It's almost to the point where it's like, why didn't you all just name it live, die, repeat? It's like they released it in theaters and like live, die, repeat's a much better title. Let's put that all over the posters. Based on a Japanese light novel or manga, uh, from 2004 that was called All You Need Is Kill, which is, which is an awesome title as well. It's like All You Need Is Kill and Live, Die, and Repeat are better titles than Edge of Tomorrow. So I feel like this movie would have done better uh, if it would have had a different title. Directed by Doug Liman, who's been making movies for a very long time. I think he did American Made also with Tom Cruise, but he also did Swingers back in the day with Vince Vaughn. He's done some of the Bourne movies, I think the Bourne Identity. So he's been directing movies for a while. He did the recent Chaos Walking, which was not that well received. I I haven't got a chance uh, to watch that one yet, but this movie is, is such a well-directed film. It's such a visually interesting movie. It's just a different aesthetic. And like I said, the action is just so well choreographed and directed and it's like you're never confused with any sometimes when you get into these like big uh budget science fiction action films i'm gonna go ahead and call out transformers because they're an easy target but when you watch movies like that you you just see a bunch of machines rolling around you're like what's going on i can't really tell what's going on i know there's battles and stuff like in here like when you're in the battles when you're in the thick of it uh, it's just so well shot, like you're so immersed in it, but you like, you know what's going on. Like you can understand the layout of the battlefield and what our characters need to do to survive, um, you know, these war sequences. So it's just very well laid out there, very well choreographed. And the action is just spectacular throughout this film. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's the performances, it's the characters, like you care about all of these characters, and especially Tom Cruise, who has such an incredible character arc in this film. Like, I don't feel like we get a lot of, I, I don't want to say that Tom Cruise is a straight up coward when this uh, movie begins, but he is a high ranking officer. He's not a soldier. He is thrown into this situation where he has to develop his skills as in the field as a soldier. He has to kind of develop into the hero that he will Will become uh, towards the end of the film. And I love how he develops through the plot. Like the plot really um, pushes him to develop as a character just because of the premise of this film and because of the concept, the time loop concept, which is just done in such an interesting and unique way. I don't feel like we've seen a time loop movie quite like this before. So I I'm, I'm, I don't want to give away like the entire details of the plot because I want, if you haven't seen this movie before, it will literally blow your mind just to the stuff that happens in this movie. So I don't want to give anything away in terms of the plot, but this is a time loop uh, story. So he has dropped in the battlefield. He has to fight. He's basically, he's a soldier and his boss wants him to lead the troops into battle and he refuses to do that. The general then sends him to fight in this war as a soldier, so he strips him of all of his um, of all of his rank, and he's just a regular soldier that has to go fight in the battlefield with no training and no experience whatsoever. So he goes down there, and uh, through whatever means, again, I don't want to spoil anything, he dies in battle, but when he dies, he comes back uh, at the beginning of his boot camp training, right before he goes into battle the next day. So every single time he dies in the war, he, he wakes up the day before and then he has to relive everything over and over again. And through this, through this, he has to like develop his skills and figure out how to survive and how to ultimately defeat these aliens using the help um, of Emily Blunt, who's like a badass war soldier uh, that he has to team up with and figure out how to take out um, these aliens and save the world basically. So it's just a really interesting premise and how he develops through trial and error. It's almost like a video game. It's very comparable to a video game. Just how when you're playing through levels of a game, you keep dying, but every time you die, you learn something new about what you did wrong. And then you have to go back and you eventually beat the level, but you may have died like 200 times. So it's kind of like that, but it's really awesome how they show this because it could have been like really redundant, but the way that they do it every single time, like the first couple of times they do kind of take you through the events uh, twice or three times. But after the third or fourth time doing the events, they start to show it from different angles. They start to basically cut out the middleman. There's some parts where you'll feel like it's the first time they're doing this, but then Tom Cruise will bring up, we've done this before and you reacted this way. So implying that he's already went through that moment like 30 times previous, but they didn't feel the need to show that. They showed the aftermath of that. So it's just a really cool way to handle this material and I don't feel like any other movies like I love the I love Groundhog Day and I love Happy Death Day but recent slasher movie but I don't feel like they handle the time loop stuff as well as this film does this I will go ahead and say it this is probably the best time loop story and film that I've ever seen and again I love a lot of time loop movies. It's a whole genre at this point. There's so many of them. There's like 50 original ones on Amazon Prime, I feel like. Um, so it's just, I feel like it just handles it better than any other movie has before. So I just, I, I think Tom Cruise is on another level in this movie. I think his performance is outstanding. Like I said, going from coward to hero. And it's just an incredible arc. It's just one of his best uh, character performances ever, in, in my opinion. Emily Blunt is great in this movie as well. She's a complete badass. Her character doesn't have the arc or it isn't necessarily as interesting as Tom Cruise's, but she plays her part well. And both her and Tom Cruise have incredible uh, chemistry in this movie. Like I said, you care about these characters. Like even when you get to some of the later scenes, some of the more emotional scenes that I feel like in a lesser movie with... Um, you know, poor writing, it wouldn't have come off as well. Like if, if some of the dialogue that they have, some of the emotional aspects that they try to insert, I feel like in a Transformers movie and another movie that wasn't so well written, wasn't so well developed, it would have come off a little bit cheesy and just, uh, you know, kind of out of place. But this movie doesn't really feel like that. Like you, you really care about everything that's going on the entire way through. And that, by the time you get to the end, like you, you really do care about the outcome and what happens to everybody involved in it. So even the smaller, like secondary, lesser characters you care about in this movie as well. So it's just really just, it just handles all the materials so well. You got Bill Paxton in this movie, which 
I completely forgot, and this had to have been one of his last roles, because I believe Bill Paxton, RIP Bill Paxton, but I think he died in 2016, 2017. So I know Nightcrawler, he was in as well, and that came out in 2014, and he was also in, in this movie. So when he showed up, I was super happy to see Bill Paxton in the movie. I love Bill Paxton. He's one of my favorites of all time. And he has a really fun part. Like, he's not in it a ton, uh, but the parts that he's in, he's he's just great. He's great in the parts that, that he's given. So uh, just a really fun, like, refreshing, just cool action movie, just with some stunning uh, set piece moments. Like I said, I don't want to give too much away in terms of the plot. So at the end of the day, guys, I got to give this movie very high marks. Like I love this movie. It's a four and a half out of five for me. The only thing that brings it down is the third act. I think that the third act is really good. I think it's a really great third act, um, but it's not as strong or as creative as uh, the hour and 15 minutes leading up to that third act. So just because of that, because it's not as good or creative as those first like hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, I have to mark it down just a little bit. It just kind of turns into a basic like science fiction action war movie in those last 15, 20 minutes. So, but again, not knocking it. It's still great. It's just not as good um, as the first hour and 15 minutes. So got to knock it down a little bit to four and a half. Now getting into the 4K transfer of this, I thought Warner Brothers did a really great job with the transfer of this. Um, it is noticeably better than the Blu-ray. I would say it's a pretty good uh, sizable improvement over the Blu-ray. I did pop in the Blu-ray uh, just to compare the two. Now the Blu-ray is in this as well. So Warner Brothers likes to give you the Blu-ray and the 4K, unlike Paramount. Um, so the Blu-ray is in this, and the Blu-ray has all the special features as well um, on it. So visually, this movie is stunning. It looks fantastic in 4K. It does have HDR10. So it is a dull, dreary film, just aesthetically. So nothing really pops, like I feel like, a, you know, like a Blade Runner 2049 or something like that, which just has so much colors in it. It's not really that type of sci-fi. It is more like, it is futuristic. Like you do have the, the mech suits and stuff, and they're fighting aliens and all that, but everything's just kind of toned down. Nothing's really heightened, at least as far as the aesthetic. Like it feels like a real gritty uh, war film, like post-apocalyptic in some sequences as well. So it is a very dreary aesthetic, so it doesn't really pop like some movies do in that HDR, but the scenes that do stand out, that are allowed to stand out, really do stand out. Just some great facial detail as well. Everything looks great. Everything is super clean and crisp. And um, yeah, like I said, it, the Blu-ray looked really good. The Blu-ray looked really good, but I'm telling you the 4K definitely improves upon that Blu-ray significantly. So um, yeah, I thought the 4K transfer was fantastic. Now you do get Dolby Atmos with this. I do not have that Dolby Atmos setup, but from everything that I've heard, it's a really great Atmos setup. You get the 7.1 uh, True HD Dolby as well. You get Dolby Digital 5.1. So all the bells and whistles sound wise here, I'm just still listening to it on a soundbar. It sounded great to me, but I can only imagine with, like I said, some, these, these action sequences are stunning. They are incredible. So I can only imagine those sequences in Dolby Atmos. I'm sure they would sound absolutely um, incredible. But yeah, getting into the special features, no new special features with this disc, which is it, always disappointing. I just, I know they don't feel the need to do it because they just did it, you know, 10 years ago when the Blu-ray came out and there's nothing really new to say about this movie, but I feel like they could have gotten something from this film, maybe a Christopher McQuarrie interview or something. He did write the movie, the same guy that's directing the Mission Impossible movies now that directed five, six, and seven when it comes out. So I think they could have got an interview with him and Tom, maybe a new audio commentary, something just to to sell this a little bit more because I don't think that this movie had an audio commentary when the Blu-ray came out now that I'm looking at it. But you do get the, you know, storming the beach, the dive into the trenches for the gritty look at creating the film's epic sci-fi battle. Weapons of the future. Watch Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt tackle the challenges of strapping the exosuits to become super soldiers. You get on the edge with Doug Lyman. You get pa follow the passion fueled director as he confronts the pressure of making a futuristic war film look real. Uh, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like this movie, it look it feels like a real war. Like even when they show the aliens, like it feels very natural. Like it doesn't feel 
um, too over the top to the point where you're, you're like, I'm watching a science fiction film and it kind of takes you out of it. You know, like when you're watching Star Wars or something, like you see those big science fiction battle sequences, you're like, oh, everything's fake. This just felt very real. So it makes it a little bit more tense. It does make it a little bit more scary in some sequences as well. And it just really ups that atmosphere and tension um, to really just improve the movie and make an overall better viewing experience. So you do get a lot of good special features in here. I just wish they would have added something new. Always got to knock it down a little bit when they don't add anything new to these, uh, you know, upgraded 4K. So as for the packaging, pretty basic right here. You know, I like the packaging though. I do like the cover on that. And, you know, on the inside, you got the, uh, you know, the same thing, just the casting list. Then on the inside, you know, you just got two plain black discs. You got the Blu ray and the 4K, but you know, no disc art. So I got to complain a little bit there. Warner Brothers usually doesn't have disc art though. They're kind of, they're kind of known for their, for their no disc art, uh, no disc art 4K. So there you have it, guys. That's my Edge of Tomorrow 4K review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, this is a must buy, in my opinion. It's $25.99 right now. It looks great in 4K. It's got Dolby Atmos. The, the movie's fantastic. Like I said, this is a truly um, underrated movie. It is so good. It's a, it's a classic. Like it is an instant classic. It should be held up there with Aliens Terminator. I think it's one of the best science fiction action films of all time. So I appreciate you guys watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications and follow me on all my social media accounts. Those links are down below in the description and we'll see you next time.